everybody, it's Lewis Porter Jr. I'm back driving my car. Um, I'm in the middle of this big, huge uh, blizzard down here in South Florida. You know, it's a, it's 50 degrees. Well, at least right now. I mean, I don't know why it's not anymore. So it's 55 degrees, so you know it's frigid here. So you can expect, you know, a lot of craziness going on. Um, yeah, I mean, I won't be able to go to the beach this weekend. And most likely I won't be able to wear my shorts. I'll have to actually wear pants. So that's why, this is how this whole big uh, snowpocalypse has affected me. You know, I know you guys in New York, you know, you're shoveling that, you know, a couple feet of snow and you're really enjoying that and getting some time off, but I, I, I don't, I don't want to get involved with all that. I just like, it's cold. I got the heater on in my car. It's kind of cold. That's how cold it is. I have the heater on. So you got to understand. South Florida, man. South Florida problems, you wouldn't understand. So, uh, let's talk about some fun stuff because I said, hey... I haven't done a video in a long time again. Like I said, I should start really doing these more regular. But it gets to the point where you don't want to talk about the same thing over and over and over and you know that kind of thing. And I don't want to bore you. But at some point, it gets really, really boring. But as usual, you know, there's always some interesting stuff on the internet that happens that I can always speak on. Uh, let me speak on my favorite thing so far. Um, I'm going this hashtag Gen Con fails. Um, so a lot of you have attempted to get a room at Gen Con and have failed horribly. Um, I'm one of those people, I'm one of those people who are roughly at the 15 mile marker, as I'm calling it. Um, yeah, it's 15 miles away from the convention, and if you're lucky, um, you might find something closer. I've, I've found a couple hotels, a little expensive, and I use the word little, like three ninety a night, kind of expensive. Like, ouch, that's expensive. So, I'm debating if I'm going to even be going this year. So, it's like, once again, Gen Con, not sure. Uh, I bought the tickets, so I might have to be like, I gotta refund these tickets. This, this, this is not working. You know, I just, I'm just like, I'm very disappointed in this whole menagerie. Um, you know, a lot of people have been saying the same thing, which I've got to agree. There's not enough hotel rooms in Indianapolis to do Gen Con. And, you know, you want people to keep coming. It's like, dude, I haven't been in years, but it's been really difficult to get a room. You know, you can, I mean, you can, it's tough. I mean, it's not kidding anybody. It's tough getting a room to any major convention. Um, well, not Megacon. I mean, I can go to Megacon. I can get a room like that because they set up for a lot of rooms. They have a lot of rooms in Orlando for events. You know, Orlando is a convention type of city, so it's not a big deal. You know, it's like Vegas, you know. You can have an event in Vegas. You can find a spot. Want to know why? Because there's tons of spots. There's tons of spots. You can find a hotel. Of course you're going to find a hotel. There's tons of hotels. Indianapolis doesn't have that same, you know, issue. They have, hey, they're they're not. They're trying to be a convention center. They wanted to be a big convention town, but then they haven't built any more hotel. They really need in that city. I mean, it's like, wow, dude. If you're gonna do these events, you're gonna do it big, and you want to do it, you know, all like this. You gotta have the big stuff. So, you know, it's a it's a it's a thing. It's a thing that needs to be looked at a little seriously. It's something that needs to be focused on, and you know, there's something to develop. It's it's. It's kind of sad that, you know, like I said, I went in on the day after the thing opened and I couldn't get a hotel room with anywhere within 15 miles of the place. And you're like, holy cow, dude, that's, that's kind of crazy. Now, with that said, I have been taking some, you know, non-traditional routes. I've gone on like hotels.com. I found a couple right there that were really astronomical. And I'm using the word astronomical as in one place wanted 500 bucks a night. Okay, um, I don't want to break this to anybody. Um, I live in South Florida, um, you know, I'm about 30, well, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, well, 30 from driving, 30 minutes, really, from Miami, like, like, you know, South Beach, the whole lifestyle, and I know I'm going to take charge of those hotel rooms, and at least with those hotel rooms, when I open up the window and look out, I'm going to see the ocean, like the massive Atlantic Ocean, and I'm going to be able to go downstairs and have myself a little cafe con leche. Uh, I'll give myself a little breakfast and then walk across the street and be on the beach. That's what I expect for 500 bucks a night. I want the, I basically want to be worried about the beach when I get high tide and come to my hotel. That's how close. You know, and at that for 500 bucks, you're going to get 500 bucks. It's going to smell like 500 bucks. It's gonna, but this is Indianapolis. I've lived in Indianapolis. So you can't, you can't give me that BS. I lived in Indianapolis and in Carmel. Dude, I, I know it's an Indy. You can't fool me. I used to work at the Vogue. Down at Broad Ripple. Hello, used to work the door. If you didn't know, but good Lord, been 10? Oh, no, been like 15 plus years ago. That's what I did. So, 
don't be trying to tell me it's worth five hundred dollars. That's just ridiculous. I'm, I'm not giving you five hundred dollars. That's just that's just ridiculous. So now we're in this conundrum of what we're going to do about a room and if we're going to be able to go. So I'm, I'm stuck kind of like that, and it kind of upsets me because the sense is, you know, I really, 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 really want to go. I would really like to go. I would like to have some fun. I'd like to talk some business to people. A lot of people I know are going to be there. Um, the flip side would be I could fly to, you know, PaizoCon. And this is where it gets kind of crazy for me. Do I choose to fly to PaizoCon, which is in Seattle, which is really, you know, a 100% PaizoCon fest. That's all it is. It's PaizoCon, 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 PaizoCon. And then maybe just get there, have a bunch of meetings, talk to people, see people out, do do some of the food stuff, you know, and it was realistically, I'm gonna be there for all the seminars and stuff like that, and that getting that kind of information. Do I do that and spend, you know, which is probably eh, up in the thousands, let's not kid anybody, you know, the room and the flat alone will probably be a grand. A grip, as they might say back in the day. So, you know, do I do that? with the potential of meeting the fan base that is already inspired and loves Paizo and Pathfinder and is more apt to try third party or take, you know, the chance at Gen Con at the hotels and see what I can do. You know, it just, like I said, it's a little upsetting because you're just like, oh, I'd love to go to Gen Con. I think I, I think I do, help me trust me. I think I do very well at Gen Con. I'd like to go to Gen Con. I haven't been in a couple of years. You know, I've had a, you know, I've had a, I've had a, a horrific last four years and I really haven't had a chance to go and I'm, and I'm kind of excited I'm like oh I think I'd like to go this year it might be a lot of fun I might have you know it could be really really cool the downside is this man are you freaking kidding me dude getting a car back and forth I think oh jeez they got a shuttle bus I don't know when it's gonna end and you know it's just one of those scenarios of I wish the guys at Gen Con would have figured out a little bit better you know their growth schedule I mean, they've been they've been in Indy now, what, going on 10, 12 years? I don't remember. I left Indy in 2000. That's when they were coming. Um, I went to a show or two in Indy, and it was all right. I was, you know, I was earlier in the business, but I haven't really been on a regular basis just because, dude, it's, it's almost impossible to get a freaking room. Oh, I want to get a room. Oh, candy. Oh, get a room. Ah. It's like, gee. And the flip, you know, get the flip side, you go to Orlando, you know, Megacon. I can walk up the street like a homeless bum and get a freaking room. Why? Because there's 50 bazillion rooms everywhere in freaking Orlando for events like this. People know that. So it's like, dude, just do the event. You go down there. And like, you know, for Orlando, it can be a day drive. You know, I go up Saturday, stay over Friday night. Oh, so Friday, stay over Saturday night, Friday night, Saturday night, go home Sunday. It's pretty, you know, because this year I'm debating about taking Lucas to go. But Lucas has never been to a convention. But I don't know if he would, might like or might be too much for him. Might overload his senses. I mean, he's still a young kid. Um, you know, I'd have to put him in a cartoon, you know, drag him around that way. Because, I mean, for a lack of a better turn, I don't want to walk him around. If he's going to get tired, I don't want to carry him. He'll build some food. It's like, you know it's going to be. It's going to be nightmarish or somewhat. Anyway. It is what it is. So, it's, you know, i got to figure out what I'm going to do with that lovely beast. Um, so, you know, you never know. You never know. You never know. I gotta think about it. I gotta, I gotta seriously think about what I'm gonna do on that. Or, you know, do I take the really crazy idea and then go to Atlanta and do Dragon Con? Now I have family in Atlanta, so you know I could always stay with them if I had to. It wouldn't be a big deal. You know, I could. It, 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 it would not be a big issue. And I'd like to have Lucas go up there and see his family. You know, you know. Or I could be really, really, really crazy and go do Baltimore Con, see my brother, and my sister-in-law, and my niece, and have Lucas there and play with them and see them and, you know, do that whole thing. It's like I said, there's so many different options to do. There's so many things you can do. There's so many cool things that can go on. That's the cool thing, you know. I like going to Baltimore Con. You know, it's, it's, it's a nice con. I know Baltimore very well, you know. So, it's one of those... But if you've never been to... Um, if, you're in the, if you're in the Tri-State area and you've never been to Baltimore Con, I would suggest going. It is a great con and as a regional con, it's a great regional con. It's a great small regional con. I don't consider Megacon to be a small regional con. It, even though it is, I mean, but it's like Florida. And Florida takes up, you know, like five states, you know. So, it is what it is. But, whatever. That's that's what it is. I think a lot of people just want to go to a good con. And, I mean, I do too. So, you know, those, even though those are, those are also combo cons, not actually role-playing cons. They do have some role-playing with them. 
I think the role playing ones are tougher to do since the crowd is once again so niche. But I think, you know, when you have a con, the con is a con. Con books, gaming, it's a con. You go to a con, you have fun, you meet people, you talk, you do what you gotta do, you know. Uh, you know, MegaCon is a comic book convention. Well, I don't know if I can call it a comic book. It's, it's an entertainment convention. They have role playing there, they have comic books, they have video games, they have animation, they have anime. You know, it runs the gambit, you know, and I think it's also a good place to acquire artists. And that's always been a big thing of me, is, is going there to meet artists. You know, I'm, I'm always looking to acquire more artists for more work and, and do that, so that's my main focus. So, Gen Con, I mean, it's like a couple days left in Jan January. This thing doesn't happen for six more months, and I'm already off to a bad taste in my mouth, so I'm like, ugh, what I don't want to hear. It upsets me, but it is what it is. They gotta, they gotta work themselves on their end, you know. Uh, what other fun stuff is going on? Um, well, I've been, uh, well, I can't say I, well, I have been, but I, okay, what I'm trying to say is, I've been working on my side of Neox is getting the Half-Giant and the Android incorporated into the campaign world. So, you know, we'd, we'd always kind of left it open on a lot of things, so we can plug things in later, go to that trick, you know, make a world, but leave a lot of openings, so you can add stuff, and you can build off of it. So, um... When I saw the androids finally becoming, because I wanted to do a war for it initially. That was one of the things I wanted to do for the US. Is, oh, I wish we could do a robot esque kind of thing. And, you know, Paizo never really knew. was like, no, we're not going to do robots. And they did androids. And I was like, oh, then they, they finally did robots. But, you know, Iron Gods. But, like, androids became, oh, this is how we're doing androids. We're going to present them like this. And they're going to be just like constructs. And, and just, boom, keep them moving. And I'm like, okay, I really like that you incorporated a really, really, really specific sci fi element into this fantasy setting. I'm like, I'm like, sweet, I cannot wait. This is gonna be badass. And with that, it tied in kind of perfectly to what we were doing with Okaga and, you know, making an, an artificial intelligence, or an Ar arcane intelligence, as we call it, and really, you know, building those kind of things out in that kind of setting. So, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna redo, I'm gonna redo the campaign book, because I wanted to add some more stuff to it. I want to clean some more stuff up. I want to put more art in there. I really wanted to, to basically go balls to the wall. I kept saying, oh, I'm gonna add some races, because I thought we missed some races that I thought would be kind of cool. Um, with that said, uh, we went with the Half-Giant and um, the Android, which made a lot of sense to me. Um, the Half-Giant, the Half-Giant's sake of, oh, okay, we want to possibly touch on psionics, and we want to have another psionic race, and they're potentially gonna have psionic abilities, which I think is kind of cool. And then with the Android, just fit really well with the Kaga, and you know, because this, this thing gets, you know, basically, for lack of a better term, worshipped as like a god. So, I mean, eventually, you know, he built his own, you know, workers. You, you know, as I've always had, like, how does Akaka take care of himself? Who aids Akaka? And I've built, in my head, not on paper, well, some on paper, but not really all of it, that, like, you know, how he gets how he gets handled, how people where the location of the actual Akaka's home base is, a lot of stuff. And I thought, well, it would be logical if he had a race that would help him out. I said, well, he could build androids. You know, androids first come, he sees these androids, they interact with them, he's like, oh, this is something I'd like to do. So he starts building his own. So he starts building his own. And, you know, I went with some concepts, because I'm really big on, when you're doing a race, stick with the concepts in your head, what you'd like to do, and then develop the race around it. Because, I mean, the concept to me is what makes it cool. You know, one of my favorite concepts we did, the Khmer, which, are, you know, we said, you know, sentient blood. Sorry, sentient psionic blood, to be exact. And I mean, here you're like, what? That, what? The concept was really cool, and we stuck it onto the race. And, you know, we knew it was going to be humanoid. We knew they were going to look probably very pretty. Um, the Khmer always, in my head, were kind of Atlanteans, actually. So I was like, these really high-tech, really advanced people in this location. And now we're going to turn them into blood. This liquid pools of blood. It's a crazy idea. I mean, that worked very well from City of Apocalypse. And kind of, you know, I, I did a that same thing when I was doing these two races to New Exus. And other races have done that too, but for New Exus. And I said, oh, for the Giants, I want to make them, you know, judges. I want to make them people who are there judging good, evil, that kind of thing. And, you know, acquiring knowledge, but, you know, they're really there to promote truth and that kind of thing. And they're going to be super good guys. Think, think super good guys. More like the super guys who focus on the truth. You can take it as good or whatever. That's your own. But that was, a, that was the thing, you know. But understanding that truth is in, in the sense of 
you know, they can see all the truth. You know, it's like illusions won't really work our way well on them because they didn't see the truth of things. Um, they can defeat the illusion of distance. It's like, you know, the only reason you can't see far away because, you know, it's, it's the distance you see. Well, they can find a way to negate that. So things that look far away to them, I mean, far away to us, will look very close to them. And really the perceptions of like sight and sound and, you know, them getting to their, to really being able to see that and see, I keep using the word see, but, you know, they're not going to be fooled by sound because they know what the true sound is. A sound might sound like, you know, a bird chirp sounds like this. A fake bird chirp sounds like this. And they can tell the difference and that kind of thing. It really, you know, their mind, their mindset of looking at the truth of things, I thought was a really kind of interesting concept that I wanted to explore with them. I thought Half Giant made it kind of interesting because you don't really, usually Half Giant, you think, oh, big tough guy. Grr. I was like, let's take it back. Let's change this. The, I mean, you assume big, tough, strong. And then to have him focus on perception I think puts a different spin on it. Um, the android, you know, workers, workers, you know, workers. These guys are workers. But I really went with two ideas. Um, and I said, I told, I stole these ones. I even told them in the blog book. I stole both of these. I thought they were good ones to use. Um, the TV show Space Above and Beyond had a group of these uh, sentient robots called Silicates, which I still think I'm going to steal that name. I'm still debating about when I steal it. I love that name. And the Silicates were basically farmed up as warriors and to basically fight wars. And this guy basically, they're sentient robots, you know, they're doing what they're supposed to do, no problem. But this guy downloads a really cool uh, virus, well not really cool, it's a really cool concept, a virus into these uh, silicates. And the virus basically says, take a chance. So the silicates become um, just enamored with gambling and taking chances and risk. So it's like very much so they're not what you expect as a typical robot. It's like a typical robot, you know, logic based, da 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 da. Well, these guys aren't. These guys are like, let's, you know, they're like, let's take a risk. Boom. Let's take, they're going to do stuff. It's like if the logical way to go up the hill is this way, you know, straight up uh, like this. They're going to take a crazy ass long about it that may pay off or may not. It's all, you know, it's, hey, it's a period. What are the odds? We're going we're gonna to go for it. And that's how they are, you know. They'll do something that you won't, you won't expect. And that gives them a great randomness. I think that's just a great idea for like machines that are willing to take a chance. Woo! Machines that gamble, you know, it's all oh, the odds of this, 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 this. So I'm gonna go to the bet. No, they're gonna. They, they might take the week, the weekend, because it may pay off better. It's that kind of crazy. And to me, I thought that was a great idea, and a great idea to explore even in a fantasy game. That was the first part. The second thing that really got me excited was uh, Jonathan Hickman wrote a series called Ultimates um, for Marvel Comics. There was the second, it was the third, it's the third, well, ten was like the first one, the first Ultimate comic books, but it was it's the third one of, the third, yeah, third series of Ultimates. That basically has, I don't want to ruin it for you, that basically these race of, I guess, hyper-genetic people come to invade the planet. They're called uh, the Children of Tomorrow, I believe. And he goes in this whole, and he does this in two pages, which I think, well, really one page, he describes their entire history and how these people developed very quickly and and I think it was, it was maybe it was two pages. But what made it cool was that he put a line in there that really stuck with me and it kind of resonated, to, uh, resonated with um, what I wanted to do with the androids. And, so, and, and the basic simple line was, these people were, get, were got told to be, be your name. Be your name. And I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting, you know. And I just think it worked out very, very well for androids, you know, who are on, let's push some luck and to be our name. So the naming aspect of them became very, very specific and very, very real. And that also helped with the identity of characters. And once again, concept. See, I think a lot of people get caught up about the race and building this cool and then adding the concept to it. Start with the concept. Start with the concept. And put, put the concept on things you wouldn't suspect. I think that puts a great spin on things and gives you some pretty cool stuff to work with. So, I mean, I mean, visually also, we, um, I know for the, for the Half Giants, I wanted something non-European, because when people think of giants, they usually go very, very European-esque history, and, da -da. and I didn't really want to do that route. I thought, you know, there are a lot of half-giants today. Um, I won't really call them half-giants, but definitely some people that are the larger physical size. Samoans, New Zealanders, um, and the Mawari. Mawari? 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 M-A-O-R-I? Mawari? Yeah. Uh, New Zealand. You know, they have a distinct look. They're larger people, and it's like, dude, those guys are... That's how I see a half-giant. You know, like, a big Samoan. 
big Hawaiian, you know, like, oh, or it's not like, you know, they're just big people. So that would be the natural, like, oh, that kind of look. That's what I wanted from them. But plus, I mean, you've never seen, I mean, facial tattoos on characters are usually evil guys. But you never thought of an entire race that would tattoo themselves and their faces being very, very common, including women doing tattoos here. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of cool ideas, a lot of cool concepts to pull from, a lot of cool visual concepts to pull from for that one. So that worked very well. Um, Android was a little tougher um, visually. Um, I mean, the artist who did it really couldn't get the initial look. I mean, we really, we had to basically scrap it like twice. But he visually couldn't get it. It just wasn't his thing. But that happened sometimes. So that was still cool. Uh, let me see. I see him at work. So. I'm going to go with this. Go in here. So, yeah, that's about it. You know, I said Gen Con. We're waiting. We're going to see him. Like I said, I'm hoping to go Gen Con. But I got to see. I mean, it's, it's, it's really just a simple matter of money. It's going to cost X. And we're going to make Y. It's not always good to get Ooh, it's cold out here, like I said. So, thank you so much for watching the video. Ah! My lunch bag. Uh, it's hard to do all this one-handed and film yourself. Can't wait till I get to the door lock. Ugh. So, yes, thank you for telling me that. Uh, so, if I... Like I said, I'm going to figure out a way to get to India. I haven't figured it out, but I'll figure something out. I mean, hey, it ain't like it's rocket science or something. All right, I'm going to go into work. Um, I'm hoping to uh, upload this video with a new beginning and end that I'm working on. I still got to do some stuff, so we can look more professional when we do these um, transparency agendas, which I think is kind of a cool thing. All right, I'll talk to you all later.